It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Let's talk about baby step number six. Okay, here this we go. This is a big one. Here we go. Number six. Pay off that home early. Okay. Now, I got to, uh, this is something I was talking to, to a group recently, and I have learned, like I said, I know we fish out of the same water that we have Dave Ramsey listeners and we have Money Guy listeners, and we all kind of, because we're all great financial. If you're, if you're consuming financial content, you're trying to improve yourself and make it better. But I am realizing that there is a group of people that consider themselves Dave Ramsey fans, that I don't think they've read the book. I don't. I would agree with that. Because cool they point. have enjoyed the baby steps of paying off debt and the credit cards so much that they, after they paid off all their consumer debt, mm -hmm. you know, where Dave then has them coming and doing 15% for retirement savings, then he has them saving for college, then we get to baby step six of paying off the mortgage. Some people skip four, five, and get right to six. Now, I, I think <clears throat> that is such an important point for us to stop and just say again. What we are saying is that we agree with Dave's baby steps and the order that he's laid them out. A lot of folks who follow them get them out of order. Yeah, I, I, I think there's people who get so excited. Like I said, they get the snowball rolling, they're paying off all the credit card debt, and it feels so good that then they roll right into that mortgage debt. It goes, let's just go completely right. debt-free. Right. And, and I get it. Look, I will tell you, I'm in my mid-40s. I will be debt free probably by the time I'm 52 completely. The only debt I have right now is my mortgage debt. Mm -hmm. And I just, I, financially, I know I have a 3.5% mortgage. I should analytically never pay that mortgage off because I think I'll do better with investments. That's There's right. always going to probably be a spread in the long term between the 3.5% versus what I could earn. However, a person in my late 40s and having a huge asset of, of, of investment assets I built up in my 20s and 30s, I kind of get the best of both worlds That's now. Right. I've already built up my army of dollar bills. Now I'm thinking about other things like, hey, let's just be completely out of debt because to take that risk of that debt and having to pay that off, off the table. The problem I have is my 20 and 30 year olds. Mm -hmm. You guys are so worried about getting out of debt. That you, and I hear people saying you're not taking into account risk. Mm -hmm. This is something, hear me out on this, guys. When you talk about risk with the financial markets, we're talking about investment risk. Mm -hmm. But paying your house early also has a risk. It's, it's what I would call liquidity risk. Yep. Because there's a lot of people, you will not, there's a lot of things that will happen in your 20s, your 30s. You're probably, you're going to have children. You're going to buy your first house. You're going to get married. The, all these things are big life events that are going to occur. Well, guess what? There's going to be emergencies, like you might lose your job. You know, there's going to be health care costs and other things. If you are throwing all your money into paying off your house first, if you hit that hiccup of life, where do you get the money? Because mm -hmm. there's only one way you get money out of a home that you prepay early. You have to either go borrow against it, go take a home equity loan, that, that, that's that's it. I mean, or you have to sell it. You have to sell it. You have to sell it. And let's talk about, you know, and, and what's really interesting <clears> is in years like 2008, when things are uh-oh, when things well, are scary. Things happen in groups. You you might not be able to sell your house. You might not even be able to You're access that You're probably going to lose your equity. job and your house is going to lose value at the same time. That's I'm just right. going to tell you, because I've seen it happen. As the 2008s, why do people lay off employees? If you're a good employee, you face a reduction in force is probably more likely, and that's going to happen in a downturn. Yep. So you're going to have everything happen at once. You need access to liquidity. Absolutely. So let's show what the what the money guy financial. So we have prepaid debt too. Yep, we're right there we're, with it. We're right there with it. The big thing is, is just making sure you understand the why you're doing this and not jeopardizing the power of compounding interest. If you're in your 20s and 30s, please get this order of operations right. right because you need to build those foundational investment assets. So then down the road, when you get to be my age, because remember, the, the, Dave talks about this, Chris Hogan talks about this, they've done the research. Mm -hmm. The average millionaire pays off their house within 10.2 years. I see that stat, and I know some, there's probably some 25-year-olds that, that read the book, and they say, well, I'm going to pay my house off in 10 years. i got to be done. What, the only thing that I think is missing, and I would love if I, if I got the chance to talk to Chris or talk to Dave about that, I would love to know, I think when you see that stat, they pay it off in 10.2 years. It doesn't mean it's their first or maybe even second house. Right. It means that like this is my third house. I will have this house paid off in probably eight to nine years yep. because of exactly what I said. I've already got my army of dollar bills built up, a big portfolio over here. Now I'm thinking about just finishing things off, and I just want the peace of mind, the, the psychological benefit, benefit of being completely debt-free, but I didn't skip some of those other steps. Yep. 
So when I see the 10.2, I think it's it's not necessarily the starter home. I think it might be the second or third home. And now these 40-year-olds are realizing they want to be debt-free by the time they're in their 50s. Yeah, and if you don't believe us, we actually we actually did this show a couple weeks ago. And uh, Reeves or more, if I don't know if we can put a link, uh, link link somewhere to go to that one. We actually ran through two mathematical scenarios of someone who pray, pays off early to invest more sooner and just a boring guy who just pays it off on a normal scale. If you are young, early on in your accumulation years, the numbers don't lie. Yeah, They don't lie. It's just something where, so go look at that video, watch that video. Uh, that's the reason, and I think Dave even understands that. I think that's why he puts his save 15% before he talks about prepaying the debt, paying off the home. Well, because it just, it goes back to that Roth IRA study, because yep. I know we're going to break this into highlights, so some people might not get to see that one. Remember, a Roth IRA con contribution of $6,000 for a 20-year-old versus a 30-year-old, they're both putting in 6000 so mm -hmm. zero difference in contribution. However, the 20-year-old at retirement will likely have $391,000 more money in retirement, do do a withdrawal rate on that. Only if because you do five percent, that could be twenty grand a year for the rest of your life. I just pulled out my calculator. You did that. <laughs> I up mean, here yeah, in yeah, I just rounded it up. I did five percent <laughs> withdrawal rate. That could be twenty grand a year for the rest of your life, just because you started saving when you were twenty I love it. versus when you were thirty. Yep.